More Metal Gear Solid representation in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's Metal Gear Talk on Block Hunt. Block Hunt. What's happening, my Block Buddies, and welcome to a brand new episode of Block Contents Leak Speak. My name is Callum, and this is going to be your content for today. Now, a lot of you guys have talked to me about the Metal Gear Solid franchise within Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I mean, the idea that Konami still owns the IP, you know, Hideo Kojima basically brought this whole world together, and now it kind of seems like it's not in the best of hands, it's not really being treated well, and of course, the spin-off of Metal Gear Solid, The Phantom Pain, wasn't that very well received. Now, a lot of you guys have said, what does that mean for representation in Super Smash Bros? I already think that it's a huge deal that we already have this character in Smash Bros. Ultimate. And thinking about the future, especially DLCs getting other characters, you know, the idea of third party characters getting another fighter from that same franchise, that would be a big stretch. Of course, it's already happened. And we're talking about all these franchises where it could happen. But for the Metal Gear Solid franchise in particular, there's a lot of really cool choices. And of course, Sakurai is very good friends with Mr. Hideo Kojima. So all of this could happen. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it here. A lot of speculation in League Speak today. And I've, of course, been answering many of you guys' questions about this game and other fighters in our show Question Block, where I answer your question. What do I think of your favorite game? How do you start making YouTube videos? Well, whatever you can think of, send your question through to blockedcontentmail at gmail.com and I will answer your question live on the show in our next Question Blocked episode. And here's a brand new giveaway. You can win one of these four Super Mario Surprise Capsules from Tomy. Any Mario item, Yoshi, or character could be inside. I leave them closed so you can find out what's inside when you win. And I'm giving away four of these, so remember to like this video, subscribe to Blocked Content right now, and comment down below to enter for the giveaway. All right, guys, let's head into the main topic of today. And that's, of course, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate crossing over once more with Metal Gear Solid. Now, it's already been a big deal. You guys have talked to me so much about wanting to hear more fighter speculation. And yeah, this is one of the franchises that I love the absolute most, not even in Smash Bros., but just outside of it as well. I think Super Mario is my favorite franchise. I would say Sonic the Hedgehog, like the adventure games. I love them too. There's a lot of love for a lot of classic games as well, like Kirby's Dream Course, stuff like that. But yeah, definitely Metal Gear is up there. Metal Gear Solid 2 is incredible. 3 is one of my favorite games ever. And I actually thought Metal Gear Solid 4, the original, are really great. And then Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain, of course, did a lot of really interesting, really big things as well. And I actually liked that game as well, even though I hope that it was getting completed at some point. But yes, I mean, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate already has done the impossible. It has brought back Snake, the third party character that was introduced in Super Smash Bros. Brawl as the first third party character ever. And then, of course, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS came around. And then, of course, Snake was nowhere to be found. That made complete sense at the time because that was such a dream opportunity that was once in a lifetime and really felt like we should have been happy to just get that thing. And well, we were. We were very happy. And I don't think anyone was really expecting Snake to show up in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. And what's even cooler is Snake wasn't alone. Yes, Snake even came with his own stage from Super Smash Bros. Brawl. It's finally back there, the Shago Hut, everything's in there, which is really cool. Absolutely love the idea that we get all those Metal Gear mechs in there, and even the Chicken Walkers from the Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, the Guns of the Patriots, that's really cool. And of course, we get an assist trophy, and that's the first character that I kind of want to talk about, because the assist trophy from the Metal Gear franchise is none other than Cyborg Ninja. Cyborg Ninja, I think, is kind of a prototype to what eventually became of Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 4, and then of course Raiden, you know, the game that he got, which was Metal Gear Revengeance Rising. It was really cool, and the idea that Cyborg Ninja was in Smash Bros. as far back as Super Smash Bros. Brawl, I think is a really, like, a testament to how cool that character is as, like, you know what I just said? like as a character he isn't really that interesting uh in many other ways beyond the design and beyond you know the story in metal gear solid but bringing him to smash brothers an assist trophy was just the right call and i think that if you take that assist trophy and make it a playable character i mean it already feels like a playable character if you have the assist trophy on the stage and I think that this character is one of the least likely ones. I think that it's likely in the sense that there is a great move set to think of for the character. And it would be great to have the trail of the eye following him everywhere. And of course, the like almost laser sword slashes that he does as the assist trophy in the game. I mean, that could really translate to a really great sword fighter style. But I mean, you guys know we already have more than enough sword fighters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That makes complete sense to not do, you know, at nauseum in the game. 
everyone was already a little bit peeved that they even did Violet, you know, and that there were like sword fighters in there in the fighters pass already with Hero, which I actually love. But if it's not going to be Cyborg Ninja, and if, you know, that assist trophy thing pretty much stays put and we don't even get Springman as the arm character, well, then it does kind of make sense to take Raiden from Metal Gear Solid Rising Revengeance, or of course, Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 2, or the same idea, Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 4, and then transforming, of course, into basically a Thunder God, which I always thought was really cool. Now, this character has, of course, also appeared in the Smash Brothers inspired game, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Yes, Raiden was a playable character in that game above Snake. Now, of course, Snake had appeared in Super Smash Brothers already in Brawl back then, so I don't think they just wanted to repeat what they did in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, I think they wanted to do their own thing, and Raiden of course is a really cool character, and at the time, of course, Metal Gear Solid 4, and then Rising Revengeance was there, so yeah, a lot of people were really thinking about that and saying, well, it does kind of make sense to put that kind of Blade gameplay in there, and I actually think that it would be really cool to get him in Smash too, but one thing against that is, of course, the fact that this character is already in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. I mean, it doesn't really exclude characters from being in both of these, and I don't think that that should be something looked at at all, but just the fact that it is a hard franchise to get, you know, characters for in the game now, especially with what would happen you know, between Hideo Kojima and Konami, and that the character has already shown up in another fighter, I think put those two together and it gets a little bit more difficult. But, however, I do absolutely love the character design. I think there are great acrobatics the character could have been doing in Smash, and of course deflecting a lot of like projectiles with the sword, doing crazy spins and jumps, and of course the awesome sword fighting. I mean, just having the ability to maybe hold down the special move button, the B button or something like that, and then just freely slash around and maybe use the control stick to kind of slash your way through the battlefield and kind of measure that up. I think that would be really cool and very unique and very much in the same vein as what Sakurai has been doing with the other fighters. Now, other fighters that we can talk about for Metal Gear franchise, I mean, there's so many great characters, but I mean, you're going to be looking at something like an Echo Fighter to be realistic, right? Is it going to be Naked Snake? The snake that was, of course, Big Boss in Metal Gear Solid 3, and of course, also Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker and spin-off games like that. And of course, continuing on with that story, Venom Snake, right? Of course, I won't spoil anything about the story, but that's also a very unique case. Punished Venom Snake, of course, also known as Big Boss Ahab B or Big Boss Phantom, right? And I think that this character is especially interesting to think about because, of course, spirit stuff in Smash Brothers Ultimate, right? Um, already representation, that character being a really cool version of Snake and also not being the snake that is in Smash Brothers, right? That snake. It's essentially a mishmash of different snakes put together, but you could argue it would basically be David, right? It would basically be the snake from Metal Gear Solid 2, and I feel like this snake would be Big Boss, right? And that would be a different character. It wouldn't be a skin, it would be changing your costume, it would definitely be an all-out new character, maybe an Echo Fighter, maybe some differences between the explosives that he uses, maybe some differences with the way that the punch lent, maybe Big Boss is a heavier fighter, and maybe he's, you know, a little bit slower on his feet, but the explosives and the punch is packed a bit more punch. I think that there's a lot possible here. You know, an Outer Heaven stage would be really cool. There's a lot of possibility with snake character and especially clones or different versions or earlier versions or original versions of that character i feel like it could make complete sense to bring something like that in because it would take a lot less development time to get someone like venom snake in the game and a lot of people have already said it it was on a lot of people's lists for echo fighters so i think venom snake would be my choice out of all of this even though it's not the most original choice and there's meryl and ocelot and a lot of cool characters that could deserve to be in that game i feel like if they're doing another metal gear character very soon then I think it makes sense to do Venom Snake because even with the mechanical arm, there's a lot of cool things you can do. I mean, shoot it out like a rocket that you can do in the game and all the fun stuff with the cardboard box. I mean, I can see that happening crazy. Now, of course, I would love to hear what you guys think of all this Metal Gear Solid in Smash Brothers stuff. Do you have a character that you think should be in Smash Brothers Ultimate? Let me know. Is there a specific franchise that you want me to talk about in the next video? I mean, this was a really great idea, guys, so thank you. If you comment down below, that could actually be featured and read out loud in our next video. And today's comment question is, do you want more characters from the Metal Gear Solid franchise to appear in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate or another game in the series later on, right? And as for a previous comment question winner, our answer comes to from Crash Fan 96 and it says, I still want Crash Bandicoot to be in Smash. So the reveal trailer starts at the blue sky, the Smash invitation is falling down, and then the screen cuts to Crash sleeping. 
doing until the invitation falls onto his mouth to wake him up. Then Crash sees the invitation and hears Mario and Sonic fighting. Oh, yeah, wah, heh, yeah, huh, you're too slow. Oh, no. And then, of course, having a battle. Eventually, Crash spins into the battle and hits Mario and Sonic at the same time, and Crash does the ba da da. Of course, yes, the splash screen says, Crash crashes the party. That would be really cool. Of course, Crash fan, you would be talking about a character like Crash Bandicoot, makes complete sense. I think it might only be a matter of time until we get Crash and Smash. I think Smash Bros. Ultimate, this game, is likely to already have Crash in it. I think that, you know, there's so many things pointing towards it actually being possible. Crash games now being on Switch. And of course, the partnership there being really good. So I think it's going to happen. I don't know which slot the character will be in, but Crash is going to come to the Smash. And I can't wait to play as the character because, I mean, so many memories playing as Crash Bandicoot back in the day. And of course, the remakes are really great. And you know, the new racing game, I love it. I mean, there's so many DLC updates. They're doing really well. So thank you so much for sending in all your comments, guys. These are so much fun to read every day. And of course, a big shout out to our latest Patreon supporters. I mean, you guys are so sweet and literally like supporting me in the best way possible. So if you want to make sure that I get to make videos like this, please head on over to patreon.com slash blocked content and donate something. You know, it really makes a difference. And remember, if you're not yet a member of the blocked content family yet, hit subscribe. Now, smash that like button and ring the bell for notification. All the news and fun that you care about will be delivered on the daily to you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you around the corner where there's always more blocked content. See ya!